Hey, Goba here. Clara has been an awesome DPS pick since 1.0, and well, now we all know she's amazing, but her power has only grown since then. Silver Wolf, La Watcher, Yukong, Blade Even, Fushuan, Lynx, and now Topaz and Hua Hua. All of these units can complement Clara in some way due to her versatility, and that's not to mention two brand new relic sets and a few light cones here and there. My old guide was four months ago, and so I won't be wasting your time with kit explanations, but instead will be updating you with the info in this video for her new best relics, light cones, and synergies. Miss Dathy's calculations were used again for this guide, much like the previous ones, and I have calculated things on top to make sure we are in agreement. So let's begin. So a quick kit summary is that Clara is all about counters, considered as follow-up attacks, and every time she gets hit, she will counter-attack. This will apply a mark on the enemies, which increases her skills damage and AoE attack. She therefore wants her aggro increased by herself through her ultimate, as well as any teammates. Her ult will also let her do special counters twice, meaning her counter can be activated upon any ally being attacked, and it will become a blast attack. Her traces grant her self-cleanse capabilities too, so she's a real powerhouse. Now let's discuss Clara's relics. Since 1.0, we have had the Champion of Streetwise Boxing set, giving her a 10% physical damage bonus applicable to all damage she is doing, as well as a 25% attack boost that ramps up during the fight. This attack percent boost is great, and she easily stacks it up with her aggro increases and follow-ups, allowing for multiple stacks in a single move. In 1.2, we got the Longevous Disciple set for Blade's release, granting a nice HP percent bonus as well as a stacking crit rate buff upon being hit up to two stacks. This buff synergizes with Clara's tendency to be attacked, granting a large stat bonus for doing what she already does best. The HP percent unfortunately does not contribute to increasing her own damage though, and is just a nice stat buff. Finally in 1.5, the Ash Blazing Grand Duke set was released, benefiting nearly every unit with a follow-up. It gives a 20% damage bonus to follow-ups, meaning her counters receive a 20% damage buff, but this also means you lose the 10% damage buff to all physical damage, making her skills a bit weaker. It then increases the wearer's attack by 6% every time the follow-up deals damage, up to 8 times for 3 turns, and then it replaces itself during the next follow-up attack. The problem with Clara is she has a 1-hit counter-attack, giving her a measly 6% attack buff, much weaker than the 25% from the boxing set. If she does an enhanced counter, it can hit up to 3 units, but that only brings her to an 18% attack buff. However, we can still abuse the 2-piece of this set. So for Relic Standings, we have the Champion set, followed by the 2-piece Duke set, combined with the 2-piece Physical. This will grant a 10% damage buff to all damage, and then an additional 20% to all those follow-ups, which are the core part of her damage profile. This 2-piece combo can overtake 4-piece Champion if you have large attack percent buffs like Yukong and or Ting Yun, and it's a substat diff to see which is better. Longevous is close behind, but since the HP percent doesn't correlate to direct damage increase, the 4-piece crit rate buff isn't enough to beat out these two other sets. Other options can include mixes of the 2-piece physical, Grand Duke, and attack percent sets if you don't want to farm anymore and have great substats. For the main stats, you'll still want a crit body, attack percent boots, physical damage orb, and attack percent rope. Energy rope still doesn't give you any benefit that a teammate can't solve, and the additional energy may be comfier, but overall will give you less damage than an attack percent rope. For an ideal stat goal, we'll want to hit at least 3k attack, very doable with no speed required and 2 attack percent main stats. You'll also want a good crit ratio, ideally 70 to 140 or even higher, but she doesn't have crit tracers something lower is fine without a crit Lycone. No speed is best unless you can't clear Memory of Chaos very fast, in which case she'd want 94 speed. Now let's look at Lycones, and first let's discuss her 3 playstyles to see why some Lycones may be stronger than others. So Clara can go skill point positive, skill point neutral, or skill point negative. Skill point positive is if she is a secondary DPS in a team with someone like Blade or Jing Liao, or anyone if you're daring. She provides damage regardless of skill point usage, so she can spam basics to generate skill points on top. She is very slow though, so she won't be as efficient as a Pella in doing so. Skill point neutral Clara is usually if you're E0, or if you have two buffers or debuffers that are consuming tons of skill points. She alternates between basic and skill in order to proc the marks from her counters, as well as allow herself to be buffed when it matters. 
which is on those counter attacks. Skill point negative Clara is if you have the skill points and want max damage, and ideally you have E1 too, which makes the marks of counter no longer disappear, meaning her skill is always at max damage after the enemies have been hit by a counter attack. So the light cone standing goes a bit like this. Lunay's signature is best if you are skill point positive or neutral, as the high base attack, crit, and energy and attack percent on top is just insane for any unit that can fully abuse it, which these Clara playstyles can. Next up is Blade's Light Cone and her own signature. They are pretty much identical. The damage percent buff of Clara's is much stronger due to it counting for multiple attacks of hers, but the crit rate on Blade's Light Cone is much more desirable than the attack percent from Clara's. These two are her strongest for skill point negative playstyles, and are still the next best options on other Clara playstyles. Eon is just behind these two in damage, and is a great free to play option. Now let's discuss Jing Liu's Light Cone, I Shall Be My Own Sword, as well as Secret Vow. Jing Liu's Light Cone gives crit damage, awesome, and then a stackable damage percent buff to your next attack when any ally excluding the wearer gets attacked or loses HP, up to 3 stacks. It will give a 12% death ignore to this attack too if you hit those 3 stacks. The problem is that Clara will have the highest aggro and it doesn't care if the wearer takes damage. At only 1 proc per first counter, so one ally gets hit and then you, for every counter, it's still much weaker than Eon. At 3 procs, so max stacks and death ignore, for every first counter, which won't ever happen in most cases, is a bit better than Blade or Clara's signatures. This would be if you got hit by a fully AoE attack every single time Clara was about to counter for example, or if you had a Jing Liu in the team and she was siphoning all of your allies HP. A secret vow is great if you have it but won't be beating Eon unless you're low HP and you won't really be low HP these days with the strong sustains we have. For the rest of the light cones you can check out Miss Tathy's sheet in the description. Finally let's discuss teams and synergies since she got a whole bunch of them. Silverwolf was released in 1.1 and enables a monophysical core. It isn't great, but it's there for those that want it. Hanya in the second half of 1.5 will mean a physical harmony, but since she's speed based, Clara won't really want her in my opinion. Blue Watcher was released in 1.1 as well, offering a very strong sustain that proxy link upon each counter if his field is up, and means Clara has even more cleansing power if she does drop under 50% HP. Yukong also released in 1.1 alongside Lu Watcher, providing a high attack percent boost that could easily be tuned to Clara's turns, allowing for high damage counters. The crit buffs on top, with skill point positivity from Clara, means Yukong is a high damaging buffer for Clara teams. Blade in 1.2 now allows Clara to do a strong dual DPS setup with the two together, since both are skill point efficient and Clara can even go skill point positive. The two don't have the same scalings though, so damage percent, crit, and enemy modifiers are the strongest to buff both at the same time. Luca in 1.2 can also join the mono physical squad if you want those big single target breaks that he provides. In 1.3 we got Fushuan for another strong sustain option, as well as some crit buffs, but nothing too amazing that we'd replace Lord Watcher with. We did also get Lynx, offering aggro increases for Clara without the possible caveats of March 7th's skill point negativity as well as her freezing ultimate when playing auto. Finally, in 1.4 we got Jing Liu as another blade type DPS that could be paired with Clara, but she prefers to be in a hypercarry comp for maximum damage. And then we got Topaz in the second half of 1.4, who is Clara's best teammate for overall team damage, combining both high personal damage and damage amping capabilities. She can be buffed by Ting Yun or let Clara take up all the buffs and energy, or you can do a mix of both. E1-S1 Topaz goes even further beyond for Clara teams. Huohua is a stronger sustain than Lynx and alongside Ting Yun can allow Clara to have her ultimate up very often if not nearly permanently. This means that you won't even need Lynx's aggro since aggro increases have pretty heavy diminishing returns. Huohua's healing is much stronger and alongside the cleanses and I guess a nice attack percent boost creates a better Lynx. So I hope this update helped any Clara enjoys. Thanks to my awesome YouTube members, thanks for watching and have a good day.